in search of soil. One of the things that drew me and likely a lot of people into biochar are articles about the Amazonian dark soils, terra preta. And you have these pictures, descriptions, some of it feels like hyperbole, puffery, that these deep black soils supported a big population in the Amazon due to this char being in the soil. How much credibility does terra preta and those Amazonian soils deserve for the publicity that they've received? Like, is there something really significant there from biochar? And did those people know something about char that we don't? Or does it just happen that there's a lot of char in those soils? Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of the interpretation of the scientific evidence right now. The Amazon forest does have these rich deposits of the terra preta earth or these black earth that have higher charcoal content than neighboring soils. Um, several of these deposits are also located where we found archeological evidence of old tribal settlements. There was the first connection with the Terra Preta that these were intentionally produced regions for agricultural productivity, that the Amazonian natives purposely added biochar to the soil to increase its productivity. It's a conclusion that is supported by the evidence. We do find pottery fragments. There are evidence of settlement near these Terra Preta sites. However, there are other terra preta sites that are devoid of any anthropogenic evidence. So that all of a sudden leads to a potential conflict that maybe these terra preta soils have a different origin pathway than solely anthropogenic inputs. I often say to people when they mention the Amazonian soils is that we have to remember how these areas were settled we didn't have large mechanistic clearing of forests. So as these Amazonian tribes were moving, they would settle in areas that were already clear cut by a natural process, such as a fire in the Amazonian forest. That would be a natural deforestation that would allow them to have their settlement and to grow their crop without having to cut and harvest trees in order to make agricultural land clearings. So all of these facets, it's impossible for us to conclude what the true mechanism of the soil formation was, but there is the hypothesis that the Amazonians intentionally added it based on the evidence of how thick these deposits are. Some of them are over three meters, approaching 12 feet, to have this uniform mixing and the lack of the stratification that we would anticipate with time really lends to me to other potential natural phenomena that have created some of these locations. I'm not discounting that the Amazonian natives utilize these areas or that they were rich in agricultural productivity. It's just the overall hypothesis that it was solely the char addition that led to the increase in productivity is the piece that we're truly missing. So somebody using that as site one evidence of this is why we should add this to agriculture, they're maybe selectively interpreting the data for what they want it to be versus seeing a more holistic picture on what those soils actually were. That's kind of what I'm hearing. It, correct. I mean, it's more, it get back to my first comments about we don't really know why those charcoal fragments were added to the soil. If we had some evidence that they were added purposely, that would have contributed to the scientific basis for the argument saying that, yep, these did in fact increase agricultural productivity, but we're lacking that evidence in terms of the archeological records. So that's the missing piece in all this. We have inferred their addition because we found that there are co-located on these sites 
but we just don't really know the true answer yet if that was the intentional purpose or if it was more of a side effect that, oh, there was a natural clearing event, then the Amazonians settled in that area and they used that land, which was then found to be productive. So we don't know what they did then, but we can look at that now from our own lens. Do you know if, if people gone and looked at that soil and said, okay, well, here's all this char in the soil. We don't know how it got here, but it's here. And then mm -hmm. look at that soil and then conclude this soil, given the presence of char, is more, would be more agriculturally beneficial than this soil minus the char. Like, can we look at it today and say that char, regardless of how it got there, makes that soil better from an agricultural standpoint? But we do know that that soil is more productive from an agricultural standpoint today. The disadvantage is soil formation is a process that involves multiple variables from not only the soil mineralogy to the char addition, but also the plant, the climate, the overall vegetative input, the soil microbial population in those soils. All of that leads to a trajectory of the soil formation process. The char addition causes multiple changes. It's not just solely adding char alone. It is fundamentally altering those other pathways and how those pathways interact and end up forming the terra preta soil that we see today is something that is missing in terms of the actual procedural mechanistic understanding of it. Can, can we look at that soil and say, hmm, like there's something unique about this because given that, that char has been there for so long, mm -hmm. is there anything we can do today when we look at it and, and just say like, like something, normally this wouldn't be right if this char wasn't here. Like we're seeing higher levels of, of this that we could isolate down due to the char being present or, or again, is that just hard because you have all these other variables acting on the soil? I haven't had the opportunity to investigate a lot of the different terra preta soils. I've only had the opportunity to look at about five different terra preta soils in my laboratory. The part that's to me was fascinating about them is that they have higher total microbial populations, but the overall rate of carbon turnover is lower in the soil. So they have more microbes but they turn the carbon over to a slower rate than what you would anticipate for that population. Fundamentally, I don't have an answer as to why this is occurring, but that's one of the other mysteries of these terra preta soils is that they have higher microbial populations, but their carbon turnover is lower. Now, if that's due to the char, we don't fully understand exactly the mechanisms of how that's interacting with the soil microbial populations. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out some of the great clips and watch the full interviews right here on In Search of Soil.